welcome once again to another video on capture one so let's just edit this image send it into photoshop see how you're going to make this look great using color grading and all the necessary tools needed to make this image look great the first thing i want to do is to you know shamelessly plug my coast house if you haven't purchased them yet this is how the coast house are even working on my studio images this is an image i shot last year i'm going to leave a card up here to the behind the scenes and you probably see how i shot this so it's going to be a full-on edit of a two light image shot in the studio so let's start let's start this way right. i have taken the liberty to run through and see which one will work and if you haven't watched the video on me premiering or putting out the coast house go watch it and see how you can use these coast house but for this video i'm going to use the x pro and the x pro one together i'm going to stack them up so i'm going to create apply to new layer and apply this to new layer so this is what we are getting i mean it's grungy i understand but the one good thing about using coastals and capture one is you can reduce the opacity and all so i'm going to reduce this to 70 70 and reduce this to 95. in the x pro one i'm going to bring back the blacks a little bit and open up my brightness back to zero then i'll go into my background come to my color tab and here in my shadows i'm going to lift up the shadows a little bit and move this towards say the bluish region and let me add some hint of blue into the shadows and this is what we have this is our before and this is our after before and after there are a couple of things we need to fix like how bright the face looks as compared to the leg which is not really a problem because you can clearly do that using um, a radial filter we can also do that in photoshop so how how is your working process do you like to have all the work done in your first editing um first post processing software like capture one adobe camera or lightroom or do you like to do everything concerning the skin in photoshop i for one i like to do all the coloring skin work and mostly the color grading here in capture one that is if i'm using capture one and if i'm using lightroom i do all that in there all i need to do in photoshop is to play along with how to make the skin smooth correct any skin tonation errors um any skin variation errors with regards to colors and all so that's what i use photoshop for so you will see me do that very soon i just quickly want to show you how these styles work so stacking them up like as you can see over here worked on this image and this is where we started from and this is where we are at and that's how magically yeah, i won't say magically because there's, an, there's quite a lot of effort that went into creating these styles. i didn't see them working for my studio images but i got bored and i wanted to see how they work and voila this is how they work so me saying the styles are mainly for outdoor images in this video i am going to retract that statement and say the cool styles the tjd color styles are literally one of the best to use for studios for outdoor all you need to know is how to combine them or how to manipulate them to work for you the next thing i would want to do is to create a new field layer okay let's create a new empty layer instead rename this to face radial filter or let's just say face right then i'll pick up my brush tool i like to use a brush tool instead double tap and paint on the face just to reduce the brightness so you're not seeing anything just because i haven't turned on the mask so hold m on the keyboard to show the mask and there we have it so I'm going to reduce the light at these parts of the body. I mean, it's not our fault. So you clearly have clients who will go like, why is my face lit and why is not my underpart lit? It's the inverse square law, if you didn't know. But yeah, clients don't really care about your inverse square law. 
so you can clearly fix that here let me add a little bit of light in the exposure in the background just so we have like a very cool overall exposure so if you take a look at it i've been able to reduce the amount of lightness on the face using my brush tool let me hold m on the keyboard as you can see and there we have it let me feather it or let me refine the mask because i feel like uh, to yes so refining the max it's more like feathering the max you've created it, it makes the selection a bit more easier and faster and better so having that in there have some smooth transitions and that's good so this is all i will have to do here in capture one how easy how fast the cool styles helped me to achieve this point so if you're interested in the cool styles go to my first video when i was previewing or i was showing you guys how the cool styles work there's a code in there i mean i think there are three more people left to use that particular discount code grab grab the opportunity and use it to get um, a percentage of the charged amount so let's just send this right into photoshop edit with photoshop i mean all these settings and edit variants as we enter into photoshop there are a couple of things i want to quickly mention to you guys so looking at this i would love to one uh, it's good let me say this before i start it's good to know your plan in photoshop it's good to know the direction you want to send the image into in photoshop the things you need to fix if you have that in mind it's going to be quick fast and easy in photoshop the first thing the first thing i need to do is to extend the backdrop when more or less crop in and i have a i have a full video on that how to crop in on your image so i'm just going to duplicate this hit c on my keyboard and i'll put a four by five crop ratio let me recenter this and open the crop so that she is in the middle i'm going to hit content aware and hit on this let's see what photoshop can do this is photoshop 2023 for all those who are wondering so i'm sure the ai system works better than the previous versions so i would advise you you know get yourself the previous versions i mean updates to the latest version okay so this is what photoshop did with regards to the cropping in so this side looks a little bit off what i will do is to take my clone stamp to sample somewhere here and paint you don't worry about the chair yet and paint just so that paint All right pick up the patch tool and we'll move this and there's a bit of repetition over here so i'll move this to somewhere here and this somewhere here so i just needed that 3d feel in the image when it came to the extended side so we have that we have that extension we have that 3d feel happening next let's correct this make it look better okay and so a couple of background fix and so this and correct it more okay okay so let's see this is the before and after before and after next you already know removing blemishes so i do all that on the layer i used to crop in on my background so remove the blemishes i know someone might ask why am i using a patch tool i always like to use the healing to the spot healing brush right 
first off, taking a look at this image, like it's a full body portrait and there's little or no texture on the skin. The texture addition will be done using the noise adjustment layer. All right? Uh, you don't want to do too much. By saying that pushes me to do too much. So let's just fix the edges. The hair on the face looks okay for me. It's just this side that looks pretty off. So I'm going to use the patch tool or let's use the lasso tool. So what I usually do is to divide the hair into two. As you can see, there's a partition. So I pick from here. Let's create the correct marks. I pick from here, right? Let me add this. I pick from here, then I move this up here. Then I hit Command G on the keyboard to duplicate whatever it is I've done. I come back to the layer one again, then I pick from here also. So it has to be, it has to be here. Then I move it up and I duplicate that also. So let me move this up this way. So the layer two, if I hold command, so let's select the hand two first. Oh, sorry, the move two. If I hold command and I drag it down, this is what we are seeing. So what I'm going to do is hold command T and I'm going to warp the hair in place. I need, you know, I need it to look a little bit authentic. So that is fine. Hold command on the keyboard, drag this down, command T, open it up a little bit and warp it in place. Like this is how quickly I get to fix these hairline problems. So let's warp this again. I mean, it has to look like All right, let me merge this to merge it this. Sorry. So this is what we have as a before and after, before and after. I'm going to create a mask, pick up my brush to move the flow to make sure it's a soft round brush. So soft round pressure opacity of flow. Move this to say 16 is fine. Paint black on white to hide you know let it blend in too much let the blend be seamless and there we have it so this is the before and after before and after I feel like this side before and after let's see again before and after so I'm going to merge this then I'll send this to liquify. So I'll hold Command Shift X or Control Shift X on the keyboard, or just come to Filter. Then you look for liquify. So here in liquify, all I want to do is to fix this. Right? Either I move this down for the rounded face to look okay, or I just move this up. So bring this down and move this up and let's see what we've done so far. This is the before and after, like you can clearly tell there's been like a good change in the before and after, before and after, before and after. So like we have the right proportion of hair movements and all. So this is before. And this is after before and after so whenever you have that hair fixed done always take into consideration how the hair is shifting or sitting on the face then you fix that problem so let's go back to our healing let's see if there's any healing to be done on the leg so this line over here move that and that and that I mean, you need to take more time in healing 
I remember back in the day, I used to tell people, if for a very good retouch, 70 to 80% of the work falls into healing. So if you have like a very well healed image in Photoshop or in Capture One, wherever it is you do your healing at, if you do it correctly, editing your image with regards to the other things being it frequency separation or dodging and burning will be very very easy that's what i tell people so yeah this information is back again so i mean just grab it use it and enjoy it for those in ghana i think next week i am going to hold a mini workshop i have already posted a video on it on my instagram All right and if you if you're here on my youtube and you're in ghana and you've not seen that particular video maybe you're not subs- you're not following me on instagram the class or the mini workshop is all about retouching and color grading you might get the opportunity to see me in person ask me all the questions you need to ask we'll take you through like a live edit when whatever it is that's running through my mind with regards to color grading retouching and all i mean i i give a little bit of information over here i educate you on what to look out for when editing and all imagine if you have me in person asking all these questions and i'm answering them in real time live what do you think it'll be way better right yeah so make sure if you're in ghana if you're available on the 23rd make sure you register for the class it's a cool thing on the ghana cities the next thing i want to do is the heel check layer thing i have a free action on that um it's on my web store just make sure you get it okay so we will use a hue and saturation layer all i will do is move to the face pick this and hit that think red right and we'll move the hue we'll move the saturation and what i will do is to move the range so that it sits on what i actually want to fix and right about there is what i am looking at so let me restrict the range all right so zero back to zero there's a full video on how to do this i'm not doing all that because there are, there are videos on it you can just go and watch them okay so this is stand on let's see which one okay so to the left instead all right the group turn off and this is what we have what we also see is that it's affecting the background and that's not what we wanted to do so i'm going to invert this pick a brush to opacity 100 flow 100 opacity 100 flow 100 pick a white brush on a black to review and what i am going to do is to paint on the skin all right so it will basically turn all the yellows on the skin to the hue i want just to have that even toned out variation with regards to color on the skin so there are not going to be a lot of yellow hues on the skin it's just going to be all red and there my friends we have fixed that problem sometimes i feel it's too much so i like to bring back a little bit of naturality to it so i keep i keep more pasty low to introduce a little bit of that the next thing we need to do is to have an even toned image on the skin right if you take a look at the skin there are certain parts that look have different colors and that's what we use this for but sometimes also this doesn't totally do the fix what you need to do is to come to the background which has all the information you need then the next thing to do 
let's to pick your eyedropper tool we are going to use these two to do that so what i'm going to do is to make sure i have my sample size 11 by 11 average eyedropper tool then i select the mid tones all right this is the brightest part and that's not what i'm looking out for so i'm just going to yeah, pick somewhere here somewhere here is fine so this is my mid tones for now and the next thing i will do is to pick my shadows so you're going to create two new adjustments layers one with the color fill and one with the gradient map and with the one with the color fill you're going to use the color we selected for the mid tones so we come down here and we see solid color fill and the solid color picks up the foreground color which is the color we picked for the mid tones and i'll change this to color and reduce the opacity so 21 is fine what to do next is to copy whatever it is we've done here because we painted a skin over here right so hold option or alt on the keyboard click and drag and drop it on the color field and just take a look at that but there's something i also want to do so pick the brush to make sure it's a black brush then on the mask you paint it out of the eyes because the eye has a different color to itself we paint it out of the lips also and the eyebrows because the eyebrows need to stand out as black All right so i hope you are understanding my thoughts process and how i am going by all of this i'm going to take it out of the watch also because i think i painted over the watch and what else what else what else did we paint on so so far this is what we're looking at this is the before and after before and after you can see the color also on her legs the next thing i want to do is to come back make sure if i come back to the background which is the layer 3 i'll flip this and i have this as my foreground and this as my background because the gradient map tool i'm about to use what it does is it picks up the foreground and the background colors so on top of the color fill i think let me bring the hue and saturation underneath the color fill and on top of the color fill i'm going to pick up my gradient map tool or gradient map adjustment sorry so gradient map and as you can see like i said the foreground has gone into my shadows and the the background has gone into my highlights but there's one thing i also want us to do All right let's turn this off click on this then i'll move this since this is my mid tones i'm going to move it sorry let's undo that i'm going to move it to the middle because it's my mid tones right so 50 the full bar is 100 so half of it is 50 and i'm going to create another point over here this is supposed to be my highlight so i'll zoom in click on this click on color and select my highlight which is the most highlighted part of the image I'm going to pick somewhere here. Click on OK and hit on OK over here. Then I turn this back on and I change this from normal to color. Copy whatever it is we did on the color fill. Then I'm going to reduce the opacity also. So combining these two, right? Combining these two, the color fill and that of the gradient map usually works so let me reduce out of the color fill to say 10 and there my friends i have fixed the color problem so let me group these two and this is what we have this is the before and after before and after i think there's a spill over here don't worry because i've grouped it i can put it into a mask pick a brush make sure it's black so that we paint it of the background as you can see so what i'll do is this selection mode select subject so that i can have the marks around the subject when i come here and i am trying to make sure i'm painting stuff off the background it will only be around 
it will only be around my subjects so whatever spill i have spilled onto the background will be cleaned perfectly that's how easy it is when you know what you want to do in photoshop okay so we have our image looking like this this is the before and this is the after the color tone and this is the before when we started and this is the after where we are heading i am going to do one last thing so in here what i want to do is to pick hue and saturation and reduce the amount of reds in this now i have my image looking like this i just want to finish with the color grade and then we'll move forward so after i've done that in capture one i can come and use selective coloring to do more things so in my blacks i'm going to push some blues a little hint of blues in my blacks to make the image stand out more i'll come into my reds and make sure my yellows are standing out coming to my yellows also All right they need to stand out so plus one that's fine this is what we've done so far this is the before and after before and after let me go back into my blacks and in my blacks let's see i want to push in some cyans and some blacks and we have this happening in our selective coloring i mean it adds a hint of contrast color and separation in our image so let me rename this to oacg overall color grading so we are done with that let me rename a couple of things just so that i don't have that mess up my so this is can mess up my action tools this is also skin and that is also skin um, red reduction and color grading so with this skin fill skin fill 2 skin color matching at least we've named it so that we know what we're about then let me rename this to healing so before and after before and after and this is what we have let me play my dodge and bend in action i have done videos on how to create your dodge and bend layers so i'm not going to do that in this video so quickly my dodge and bend i have the check layer for the inverted black and white and a normal black and white so i'm going to pick a flow of one or let's use a flow of two and if i see it to be time wasting i'm just going to fast forward this video but for all those who don't know what to do using dodge and bending and make sure i'm using a soft round pressure opacity and flow my air pressure my air brush is turned on flow of two just because i want it to be fast white on my black dodge is to add light burn is to take away light so dodging and burning is all about addition and um addition and reduction of light on the surface you're editing on and also if you take a look at this a quick brief on dodging and burning all i'm about to do is to match the tones on the skin if we zoom in you can clearly tell this parts and this part of different um tonal variation with regards to black and white the reason why i'm using a black and white checker layer is to take away the the problems i'm going to face when i am dodging and bending this in color uh, it's, it's it's just taking away the color away from the image just so that i see this in only black and white and the different tonal variations of black and white so if i have 
this which is which should be a mix of white and black which gives me gray i mean i know the toner variation for the gray and all i have to do is either add light to smoothen that process or take away light to darken the process or to make the transition easy that is all dodging and bend is all about or this particular technique of using dodging and bend so i'm going to quickly do an example burn just to tone down the eye box over here so i'm taking away light over here and after i take away the lights i'm going to use the dodge to make sure the surrounding which already didn't have lights almost looks like what we just did so this is before and after let me turn off the black and white zoom out so that you can see what we just did so precision and precision and accuracy are very needed over here but for an image like this i'm not going to go all the way close up just because i don't need you to see that so i'm just going to reduce the parts that are standing out all right and move forward it doesn't really need to be perfect it just needs to be presentable and if it reaches where i think i want it to be perfect i'll just waste a lot more time on this so presentable like i said before and after as you can see sometimes i use the inverted check layer if i want to go intricate on the dodge and if i want to see I want to make the transitions look appealing to the eye, look easy to the eye. One good trick to also keep in mind when dodging and bending is to follow the direction of the light on the face. So if you see where your highlights are, keep the highlights. What you need to do is tone down the shadows around the highlights. So that is what I just did. So I use the dodge to tone down the shadows just so that it sits well with the highlights. If I see shadows, I think I'm being too restrictive. Tone down the dark parts, which is the dark grays, so that they can, you know, blend in easily. So this is what we just did. This is the before, before and after. Let me zoom out. Before and after. So we're not going too in depth on that. We're just toning things down to make it look easy on the eye. All right, so let's go to this part of the face. Dodge and bending gives me so much control over how the face structure should look like i can sculpt the face which is a plus for all those who who have ever taken a course in sculpting in the visual arts sector i mean it's easier on you guys to end because how light falls on the face makes the face either look big or small so for all those who do visual arts graphics and all that it should be very easy for you to do the whole photography thing at the end of the day it's just something you're used to am i right i 
just told myself I wasn't going to go in depth. Uh, so this is what we've done so far, before and after, before and after. It's good to also zoom out and see from afar what you're doing. Otherwise, if you're all that zoomed in, you're not going to see how you are already messing up the image. Subtle changes, like I said. And if you feel like your eyes have been too glued to the screen, take a break, take off your eyes off the screen, come back and you're going to see more problems. It's good to take breaks. If you don't take anything from this video, always know that it's good to take breaks when you're retouching. Let's remove this eye back. It's good to take breaks when you're retouching. It makes it easier to identify problems because then you come back with a fresh looking eye. patches will go I can use the patch tool to remove this from the background but I feel like it's easier using dodging and burning it's slower yes but then you have control of how they look so before and after So know that when you dodge a place, you can equally bend the same place to reduce the dodge. That's if you've done it, if you've overdone the dodge at that particular area, you applied the adjustment. So it's a simultaneous dodging and bending process that I am doing currently. And the face is quite important because that is where the attention goes to. When somebody picks up your image and is looking at it, after we'll just tackle the body. So you know what? Since I've given you all the information regarding dodging and burning, listen to this cool song whilst I fast forward the dodging and burning process.
so finally i am done with the dodging and burning and i hope you enjoyed that process what i want to do next is to add some contouring to this or darken some parts bring some parts to life so currently i have my floor at four and what i will do is to be dodging the highlights initially i wasn't dodging the highlights well i said simultaneous dodging and burning mm. so with this i am bringing up more details using contrast by dodging the highlights and burning the darkest parts of the image shadow so to bring back that 3d feel so let's bend the eyebrows bend the eyelashes and the eyelids also and dodge the reflections in the eye let's zoom out give it a little bit of contour nose also then we'll jump to the outfits all right bring back some dimension to the outfit i always say follow where the light is hitting So this is it before and after let's zoom out before and after before and after so this is what happened in dodging and burning i told myself i wasn't going to go intricate but at a point i think i needed to just to make the image stand out let me add some depth to the hair also so darken some parts make sure they are not flying on about then we'll bring some parts to life all right the background okay let's not do that all right so what next to do the eyes are already white so i'm not going to do anything to it what next to do is to add the noise uh, so noise like i said earlier because the image doesn't have a lot of texture on the skin the noise is going to do that for us and that's what it has done i have a video showing you how to create your own noise adjustments layers so i'm not going to do that here in today's video I added the texture using the noise the next thing i want to do is to add sharpening to the hair and the outfit so sharpening you guys know how to create the sharpening so to make sure i invert this pick brush to flow of 90. i'm not sharpening the image you guys know i don't like to sharpen my image i'm sharpening the outfit so assuming this was a fashion shoot where the outfit was the main focus this is how you push more focus to the outfit so let's sharpen the lips the eyes because the eyes draw you in the eyebrows then the hair okay what next to do is to create a vignette so command shift n to create a new empty layer j on the keyboard to select the gradient to make sure your foreground and your background color is black and white pick the radial filter over here hit on reverse and opacity to whatever opacity you want the mode and normal then what i will do is zoom out a little bit hold shift on the keyboard 
and draw a straight line from the face because I want the attention to be on the face. Eh? So somewhere here should be fine for me. Then I have my vignette looking this way. I can create more. So let's see. This time around, I'm going to drag it to the left. All right. So what I will do is create another layer again. Drag this to the left. So from the center this way. So that I'll see how it look like. So I'll change. I'll change both to soft light where's the soft light and change the second one also to soft light i need attention on here okay reduce the opacity a little bit and let me merge this so vignette before and after feels too much isn't it mm, so let's reduce this to 60 all right so and all this is the image we have let me quickly show you before where we started from and we entered into photoshop and this is where we ended at so i mean the processes that are involved what you need to do when you're entering into photoshop we knew we had to fix the background crop it and heal do a little bit of color correction and color grading, dodging and burning, adding noise, sharpening the outfit and the hair, and added vignette. And that was it. After saving the image in Photoshop, this is where it ends up at. So this is where we started from. The before, this is how the image was shot in the studio. ISO 100, shot us one over 160, f2.8 with a 100mm lens. There's a link to the video, the behind the scenes of this shoot. I'll link it up here. Just go and watch it. This is what we had. We added our two co-styles. If you're interested, it's still being sold on my website. In the video, I did mention something. So you can just watch throughout and figure out what I said. We have the TGDX Pro, TGDX Pro 1. Stacking them up, I have this at 95% and I have the X Pro 1 at 70%. So we sent it from this to look like this. And the face here was to make sure the luminosity on the face was matching that of the skin. We did that further in Photoshop and that's how we ended up with this. So in Photoshop, we cropped in just to have our background extended so that we can have our subjects centered in the middle. Did a few adjustments, did some few color grading and dodging and burning. And this is where we ended up at. And comparing the two, I so love whatever it is that has been done onto this particular image. I like the subtle dodging and burning, the texture, noise, and all that the vignettes, making sure the image stands out. And yeah, and that's how and that's how you do it, right? Thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure you check out my web store, grab the co-styles. Good, good, good. And as you can see, they are equally working on my studio images as also working on my outdoor images so make sure you you get them if you're interested in getting them for your capture one get them try them out on your images understand how to use them tweak them to your liking and make them work for you like i made them work for this particular image i'll see you in my next video peace